Arizona destroys ASU basketball and firmly puts a, a grip on a number one seed so far, but there's a lot more to take away from this game as well. You are Locked On Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, we've got a lot to get to this show. Arizona takes out ASU and takes out ASU in dominating fashion. Um, this game was, uh, this game had a little bit of everything. First and foremost, I'm glad that Arizona came out and took care of business here because one thing that I didn't want to see happen and one thing that has been when Arizona has struggled at times this year, one thing that has been a downfall for this squad is not is playing down to the level of their competition or uh, not giving a, or giving teams wide open shots, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You name it. Um, it has happened probably at some point. Uh, that is frustrating. Um, Arizona did absolutely none of that against ASU. Not only did Arizona do absolutely none of that against ASU, they also took care of business across the board. They didn't, uh, when, uh, when Arizona pushed that lead, they didn't get ASU back into the, uh, they didn't let ASU back into the picture. Not only did they not let ASU back into the picture, they also didn't. Uh, they also continued to just focus on what Arizona could do, and that again is a team that when you bring in the kind of players off the bench that Arizona brings in, um, you should be able you should be able to smack the crap out of teams like ASU, and they did exactly that. Now we're going to make fun of ASU here for a minute, and then we're going to uh, then we're going to move on to uh, obviously better things. Uh, if I'm ASU, I don't know what to do. Listen, um, I know that he comes off as an unhinged maniac uh, on the uh, on the court. I get all of that, but the uh, but Bobby Hurley is actually a really nice dude. Oh, by the way, show brought to you by FanDuel. I do apologize about that. I do apologize. Um, but the uh, Bobby Hurley is a really really nice guy. Um, and uh, but. You watch him and you just kind of wonder, all right, is this about as far as uh, he is Arizona State and uh, Bobby Hurley can uh, go? And again, maybe that's okay. Maybe if you're ASU, you're like, you know what, I'm fine with uh, where uh, where ASU is. But it's maddening, though, because there's absolutely no there's no structure on the court. And not only is there no structure on the court, it just doesn't feel like that Arizona State's ever going to get any bit be- any better. And I think that's something that is uh, would be – would be frustrating if I'm an Arizona State fan. Is that um, I, I would want? I, I would expect a little bit more. To be honest with you, I would expect. Uh, I would expect to be able to go out there and um, you know I'm in a city. I'm in a city of a you know of a lot of people. Not only am I in a city a lot of a lot of people, but we should be able to win some games. And not only are we not. Not only are you not winning games. You're also not, you're also not winning, uh, you know, you're also just not, you're just, you're just kind of, you're just crummy, man. Again, there's no real rhyme or reason for what Arizona State does. Uh, I think that, you know, listen, with Bobby Hurley, one of the things is, I think that was enticing for some people and some recruits is, hey man, I'm going to let you play. That is awesome, but that certainly has limitations though. And by certain, I mean, certainly certain limitations and that, you're not really getting any better, are you? I mean, are you? I mean, maybe you are, but you're and you know you bring in a recruit. But what's the what's the point of having recruits or players? I mean, think of it this way: look back at the Trey Holder, Shannon Evans, Cody Justice, Romello White team. That was a pretty loaded team in hindsight, and they started out fast and then they didn't get any better because again, that's just not what's really impressed upon at ASU. That's not really the structure that Bobby Hurley has brought into a. Uh, has brought into play. And I think that's why they're always going to be somewhat limited. Um, so I don't know if I was ASU, I'd look to move on and I would 1000% try to get Eric Musselman on board. We're big fans of Eric Musselman on this show. Um, now listen, a lot of people say, well, why would he leave Arkansas? Uh, I get all that, but Mus, uh, as much as I like Mus, Mus is somebody that also has a shelf life wherever he goes. Um, you know, he's a, he's not the easiest person to be around. And that is that. All right. Now, 
Going on to uh, Arizona, but I still hire Moss if I'm ASU. All right, now going on to uh, Arizona, though, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Jaden Bradley first. I am a big fan of Jaden Bradley. Um, I believe that Jaden Bradley is going to be a starting point guard here at the U of A. And not only do I believe that he's going to be a starting point guard, I believe that he is going to be a dude who is, um, I believe that he's going to be a guy that maybe even flirts with the NBA. Now listen, um, I get that there are certain things about his game that are not aesthetically appealing. He can't really shoot. So, uh, and again, I get that. That's frustrating. He's not a great shooter. He's never going to be a great shooter. Um, but I think that he's. Uh, I think that the uh, his ability to score the basketball is very, very under uh, underappreciated, um, and he's going to continue to get better at it. One thing about Bradley is, yes, um, he can, it can be frustrating at times watching him, uh, you know, try to score the ball, but he's also going to continue to get better. Um, and defensively, he's he's a pest, and I mean that in the best of ways. When Jaden Bradley is out on the basketball court defensively, you notice him, and you notice him immediately, immediately. Um, so, I think what's uh, with uh, with uh, with Bradley though, you also know that not only do you uh, are you going to get somebody defensively that's going to be an absolute pest, but you also get somebody that embraces what Arizona needs him to do. And he's gone out there, and again, keep in mind, this is a McDonald's All-American kid. He's gone out there, and he has done exactly what Tommy Lloyd's wanted. Sometimes he's gotten 12 minutes. Other games, he's gotten 28 minutes. But either way, he has been a uh, he has been very, very good for Arizona, and I think he's somebody that if you're an Arizona fan, you're excited about what the future holds because he's continuing to get better and better. Um, then, And I think, like I said, uh, again, I'm not saying that he's this player. But I'm also saying that I think there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of Jason Terry in him and that he's not, you know, again, he's not going to be the greatest scorer in the, or no, I mean, JT was a great scorer, but kind of that, that role in those first couple of years where you come in off the bench, um, you kind of, you switch things up with your, uh, you switch things up with your, uh, your defense. JT was obviously a much better scorer. That's why Bradley will never be in that league. But either way, that is something that I think Arizona fans should be, uh, should be very enticed by because again this dude continues to get better and better and better and he's doing it the right way you can absolutely tell that he uh that you know this the coaching staff likes him that this fan base likes him and when he and kj lewis come off the bench man they just change things and there's not many teams in college basketball that you could say they just change things but these two dudes jane bradley caleb love or excuse me uh, kj lewis there's a lot of uh, Son Adams, Andre Iguodala in them, in that when they come in, they just provide something a little bit different, a little bit of an extra gear that some of the starters don't have. And I think that's what's very enticing. That's what I think that's what's very exciting about um, what Arizona is able, what Arizona is able to do when you bring those two off the bench. Then Mount Crevis, obviously, as well. He is a... Uh, Air, the, that's just really a trump card for Arizona. And we're going to continue to talk about those trump cards and another player. But first, FanDuel. FanDuel, check it out. All right, all kinds of good stuff. FanDuel, you can put down five bucks and you can get $200 in free plays if, if that bet wins. That's simple, that easy. Listen, there's nothing more enjoyable than betting on games. If, and if, especially if you don't have an, if you're betting on a game, that you have no interest in, guess what? All of a sudden that game becomes interesting. Check it out, fanduel.com slash locked on. You will thank me later as always. Fanduel, check it out. Again, all kinds of good stuff going on there. And basketball is in heavy gear right now. The rotation is going. Check out Fanduel. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Happy Tuesday to you all. Um, okay, now, I want to talk a little bit more about the bench. Listen, right now, UConn's the best team in the country. I don't think there's any doubt about it. They're absolutely smacking teams. These games aren't even close. Uh, Danny Hurley uh, does a lot, uh, does a very good job with the UConn, as you might know. Um, but... Uh, Arizona, I think, as far as being right there in contention to be that second other that second other team, that other team, I think has the highest upside of any team in the country. 
Um, not only did they have the highest ups, because I think they check off the most boxes. And I think that's something that as an Arizona fan, uh, you got to embrace. Um, and a big part of it, too, is that bench play. The bench is fantastic. Listen, um, you've got three difference makers that come off the bench. And not only do you have three difference makers that are coming off the bench, um, you got two dudes in Jane Bradley and KJ Lewis that every time they come out there, you know that they're going to give you uh, you know that they're going to give you something. They're going to give you something that uh, you don't really want uh, that you don't really want um, now or the, the other team doesn't really want. The big key, though, is Mount Crevis. Mount Crevis has to be a uh, has to be a contributor. When Mount Crevis is good, everything else just kind of flows for Arizona. And again, he should be able to be, I think, a consistent contributor because again, he can be heavy footed, but as can Umar Balo, leader of men. But he's also when he comes in there again, he's another guy you just know it that when he comes in, he's the game kind of changes a little bit. He's got a little bit of the flip. He's got a little bit of the uh, the left and right move. He's got the hook or all, all kinds of different things that are very, very good, very, very enticing. Um, so, Crevis, you got to keep him in the rotation, in my opinion, because Arizona is much better for the wear win. Mount Crevis is in there causing some problems. But him, Jaden Bradley, and K.J. Lewis, yes, please. I don't know that there's anybody else in the country that has that kind of bench depth. And if there is somebody that uh, has uh, has that kind of bench depth, I would like to see it. I do not believe that that is out there. Um, now, moving on then to Caleb Love. As usual, Caleb Love had a highlight dunk. Highlight dunk going down the lane in traffic. Uh, what, one of my only beefs with Caleb Love is that sometimes he misses dunks that he should uh, get. He got that one. Um, still worries me a little bit. Sometimes I'd like to see him just lay it up as opposed to the U of A big men who I'd like to see dunk it. But either way, Caleb Love's the man. Caleb Love to me is the Pac-12 player of the year. Arizona's going to run away with this conference. And Caleb Love is a huge reason why down the stretch he's big. In uh, big moments, he's big. Caleb Love, just that dude. Uh, you know, that's the best way I can put it. Um, like I said, he wants the ball when the uh, wants the ball when the game's on the line, and not and he doesn't pretend to want the ball. He really does want the ball, and his percentages I think are better than some people are giving him credit for. I think he's played at an All American level this year. Not only has he played at an All American level. He's, I think, probably the most irreplaceable player on the team, mainly because you don't get dudes like him that, uh, you know, that can come in there and do exactly what he does. He has been an absolute privilege to watch, a joy to watch. And again, you still got some more time with him. I would be, like I said, I would be very surprised if he is here after this year, because I think he, what he came here to do, win games and improve his NBA dra draft stock. I think he's done both of those. Um, and I don't know that his draft stock will be any higher, so I'd expect Caleb Love to probably move on. But either way, very, very appreciative of what Caleb Love has been able to do for uh, Arizona basketball. And again, like we talked about, he's somebody that uh, he's somebody that Arizona didn't have last year. You had it the year before with Ben. You didn't have it the year before. So again, he is a uh, very much salute emoji tip of the cap to him. And Kylan Boswell, another double, dig a double digit uh, scoring game. Totally cool with what Kylan uh, is doing. Again, gonna, I know I'm going to say this every single show, and it might be a broken record, but every now and then I get a good point. If I get a good point, I'm going to continue to beat it, uh, beat it home because I generally don't get many good points. But don't need Kay or Kylan Boswell to be an All-American. Just be kind of a fringe all-conference player somewhere in there where I know that each game – I'm going to get double figures out of you because, again, he's good enough to be able to get double figures. There's absolutely no reason that he can't get double figures. Um, I'm uh, like I said, I uh, I'm very enthused to see what he can do uh, moving forward, because, again, I do believe that he is the key to the team. Um, and then, like I said, uh, the other one, Pella Larson didn't have a great game. But, you know, Pella Pella has been putting in work this uh, conference season. Uh, Pella is going to probably be an all conference player. Not only is Pella going to be all conference player, he's also going to be the guy who he's also going to be the guy who uh, was just kind of that ultimate glue player. And I mean that in a very complimentary way that he just kind of does a little bit of what everybody else um you know, would like to do, maybe can't quite do, whatever the case may be, but Pella's been Pella's been great for Arizona. And then 
Uh, key shot, like I said, I just need effort out of key shot. That's all I need out of key shot. I just need effort. And when Arizona gets effort out of key shot, Johnson, it is a, uh, it's, it's, it's a different team. I mean, you just look at that Purdue game and not only would you look at that Purdue game, you also know that, uh, you also know that he's just capable of it again in the national championship game last year, 13 and four, and not only 13 and four, um, uh, not only 13 and four, but he also was something that he was also was able to play that uh, uh, was actually able to play at a very, very good level. Um, now, let's see the couple other things um, that I think that we need to do definitely talk about is where is Arizona? Where is Arizona at in the grand scheme of things? Um, and I think a big part, I think a big part of it is. Uh, I think a big part of it is I think they're again, I think they're they're headed straight towards a number one seed. And I think that they believe that they should be a number one seed um, and, or, and, you know, there should be a number one seed. They shouldn't trip. Listen, Arizona might drop a game or two. I get all that. But Arizona should be shouldn't be able to trip up and uh, Arizona shouldn't be able to trip up and uh, and lose the games in uh, moving forward. I mean, I guess maybe you lose to Oregon, um, but Oregon's not very good. Um, maybe you lose a game in the uh, Pac-12 tournament, but I think you would also hope by then you would have a number one seed locked up. Because keep in mind, this is a team, Arizona, now that's got a very nice resume um, in that you beat Duke at home. Duke is good. Excuse me. Um, you beat Alabama. It turns out Alabama is going to be a very, very good team. Uh, Wisconsin's fake good, but whatever. Um, you know, Wisconsin. And the other thing, too, is that you look around the landscape of college basketball. Not only do you look around the landscape of college basketball, you look around and you're like, um, you also uh, you also look around and you're like, okay, um, the uh, with the landscape of college basketball, you know that you know there's some different teams out there that and they're all losing. Look at Kansas, man. I mean, Kansas has run college hoops for the last you know for I mean under Bill Self for the last 15 years. What multiple national championships. Uh, what four or five or four or five final fours? They're struggling this year, um, and they've got they've got uh, road losses. It's tough to win. I know that it's a cliche, but it's tough to win on the road, ladies and gentlemen. It just is. It is not an easy endeavor to win on the road. Not only is it not an easy endeavor, it's also not a uh, it's or uh, it's also not a spot where it's just easy to win. I mean, that's that's just kind of the way it is. Um, you know, again, not really breaking down the atom or reinventing the wheel here. It's just, that's where it is. But Arizona should be a one seed. Um, Arizona should be a one seed. And not only should Arizona be a one seed, um, Arizona should be a, uh, Arizona should be a team that should get that one seed out. Western, it matters. Listen, I know some people are like, I don't really care where Arizona gets the one seed. Um, I just want them to, uh, I just want them to be out there and, uh, or I just, you know, I don't really care. It's about Arizona. And I think there is a very, I think that's a very valid point to a certain degree that it is about Arizona and about where, um, about where Arizona should be. Now we're going to talk about this being more on Arizona than the opponents coming up next, but first let's see here. What do we got here? Hold on just a second. Um, let's see here. Uh, we have got, LinkedIn. That's right. Duh, LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn. Everybody knows somebody that got a job through LinkedIn. Check out linkedin.com slash locked on college. I, uh, I know people that got jobs through LinkedIn. You probably know people that got jobs through LinkedIn. Check it out. All kinds of really, really good stuff there. And um, listen, if you're looking to hire somebody, LinkedIn, that's your spot. If you're looking to uh, if you're looking to get a job, LinkedIn, everybody again is on there. Uh, check it out. Again, this is where all the professionals use. Check it out. LinkedIn.com uh, slash locked on college. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. All right. Now, now let's uh, continue to talk then about Arizona. And I do believe it's about Arizona. Honestly, uh, as good as, uh, as you know, I know that everybody likes looking at the scoreboard, looking at other teams, et cetera, et cetera. Um, listen, when it comes down to, uh, when it comes down to Arizona, you want, uh, it's more to me about what Arizona does. And, 
listen, I mean, it's really kind of, it really kind of comes down to that one. When, when Arizona, Arizona plays at their full potential, Arizona should be able to beat anybody. And not only should they be able to beat anybody, um, they should also be able to beat um, any team that comes across, uh, any team that comes across their pass. That's how good this team is because again, they check off all the boxes. Um, you got guard, you got talented guards, you've got bigs, you've got wings. It's a big team. It's a deep team. They've got everything. So again, there's really no reason that Arizona shouldn't be able to be in the Arizona shouldn't be able to be there. Um, and not only should Arizona not be able to be there, Arizona should 1000% be able to beat about any team they play. Um, listen, UConn right now. And again, I'm going to keep saying that UConn right now is the best team in the country. Um, but right after that, I think Arizona's got the highest upside. Um, Purdue does not, again, come, listen, Purdue's good. I get it. But come March, I don't really worry about Big Ten teams. Now, you could say, well, Arizona, they got knocked out in the first round. Yeah, true. Fair enough. Um, it's a totally different Arizona team. And I know that Purdue may, may moved a couple players in and out, but it's kind of the same team. Um, I still think that they're going to have real limitations against any athletic team, any form of that. So, again, uh, okay. Um, but Arizona, though, you got to feel really good where they're at. And, again, Tommy Lloyd, got to give him a lot of credit as well because, again, he's uh, he needed to get a little bit tougher on some players, I think. He needed some accountability, and not only did he need some accountability with these guys, he uh, was the um, – he was kind of the driving force that – uh, all right, we got to be able to do this. We got to be able to do that. And I know that you know behind the scenes, he's gotten on the players, and he, you know, and he, he's uh, he's essentially told him, he's like, you know, I get on you guys because I know you can be great, and I love you. And I always say that to people, like, well, you know, if if a coach is getting on you about things, it's because they know you can be good. Unlike unless it's a dweeb like Mick Cronin, who you know is just whatever. Um, any other coach. Like generally, if they're getting on you, it's because they know they can reach another level. A lot of coaches know that they can't, you know, if a player can't reach another level, they're not going to get on you because that's it's just a defeat. It's a waste of the time because the limitations are just there. Um, that's not the case, though, with this. Uh, that's not the case with this Arizona team. Tommy Lloyd knows that this team can win a national championship. Tommy Lloyd knows that this team can go to a final four. And that's the difference. Like when you watch ASU, when you watch Bobby Hurley, I mean, I hate to be a jerk here, but um, I can't even really get mad at Bobby Hurley anymore. This is just kind of who Bobby Hurley is. This is well, how the teams are going to play. That's what the uh, the rotation, that's what the line is going to be. That is what, uh, that's where it is. Um, so uh, that's where we're at. That's kind of where everything is. But Arizona, though, playing really, really good ball. And they were kind of at that crossroads midseason point. And maybe that Stanford game, I don't know what, where it was. But maybe there was kind of a uh, you know a tipping point, or maybe it was the Utah triple overtime game. Who knows? That Arizona fans look back on and they're like, "Man, that was a real, real uh, difference there for Arizona." And I think that's something that we've uh, got to keep a big eye on. All right, now coming back tomorrow, we are going to start previewing again because you got you got more games coming up this week. We're going to talk about what you need to know about certain teams, and then. Obviously, we're going to get back into some Arizona football as well. But, um, like I said, really, really good time to be back in the A. And Arizona has just played incredibly good basketball. And it's been an absolute privilege to watch. Uh, like I said, it's it's been something that's been very special. And hopefully this can continue because, man, when Arizona's playing like this, they are as good a team as there pretty much is in the country. But on that note, as always, very, very much appreciate you guys all making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. Have a great rest of your Tuesday, and we will be back with you tomorrow. Bear down and back the A.